So you think you would have sex with a lot of the population? Yes. But you know what's boring is just to talk about the chicks. How about the guys that you would, if you, if you were gay? And I guess I'm old school, but I don't see men like sexually unless they're famous. I see brothers so sometimes. Much. Like if I see a, a black dude, dark black dude. Oh, I thought you with, meant two siblings. No, no, no. Oh. A dark black dude with, with yellow gold on. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, cool guys look. got swag. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so for my regulars, this will come as no surprise given the forensic coverage of their downfall on this channel, but at this point, Two Bears, One Cave is a complete joke, just without the funny part. And the thing is, there's always been a few glimpses here and there into the old Tom and Bert who used to be easygoing, laid-back comedians who would shoot the breeze on their podcast and just have an all-round good time. But things have definitely changed. Now the podcast is one massive grift and the latest episode perfectly captures just how far off course these two Muppets have gone. Well, I'm meeting Shaq next week. Really? Where at? I'm doing his podcast. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm such a fan of Shaq's. I would not yeah. have sex with Shaq. No, you shouldn't. No. Don't tell him that either. I'm not even going to bring it up. Ah, you've got to love those banked episodes. And so the transition from comedy podcast to cringe compilation is fully complete. The worst part is I don't think they care. And I'll explain why towards the end. I'm also going to show you how, yet again, Tom and Bert are scamming their audience with their new vodka, poor Osos. I wonder if Joe Rogan knew way back when he told all his buddies to start a podcast that it would end up this way. Let me show you what I mean. The title of their latest episode is Shannon Sharp Won't Like This Bracket, and the whole theme of the podcast, wait for it, is famous men that they would sleep with. Yep, Two Bears 2024. Bert did one podcast with Shaq, and now he's calling black guys brothers. You can't even bring up, like, gay shit with brothers. Like, they no. just don't, it don't, they don't play that way. No. Like, we play that way. Yeah. I love it. I well, love gay shit. Speaking of basketball, we have a bracket for you. Oh, please tell me we're going to name M NBA people we would f I think it's just... Um, I don't even know enough people in the NBA that I'd f Real quick, top five NBA guys I would have sex with. Anthony Davis. Really? I just saw him play the other night. LeBron, obviously. Yeah. Steph Curry. I'd be the top. Well, these are those are like also great stories. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're at, hanging out, you're like, you know who I just f <laughs> Steph Curry. People are like, get out of here, really? No and way. then you're like, yeah, the next day I had sex with LeBron. It was f***ing a wild 48 <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh the greek dude Giannis. yeah yeah i'd have sex with him bro what are you saying how did it seriously come to this and the thing is this isn't some off-the-cuff discussion they went down we know that they plan out these episodes and have production meetings before they bank three months worth of episodes into two weeks of recording so that's where the title of this episode came from remember they created these brackets so they could narrow down the guys they want to sleep with to find a final winner Oh, we have a bracket? Yeah, it's a bracket. We oh, shut the f*** up. March Madness, baby. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay, okay. F*** yeah, so we're going to find the most f***able celebrity right now. So let's just get this straight. Two of the highest selling comedians on the planet had a production meeting and the best idea for a podcast they could come up with was to do March Madness brackets of famous dudes they want to get railed by. Now, if you're not already cringing from Bert's insane groupy energy, take this as a warning. It's about to get bad. Just to give you an idea of the level of detail involved in deciding who wins each stage, this is what happened when they got to the Kelsey brothers, and it wasn't deciding between the two of them, they were both on the same side. Don't come at me in the comments, guys, because I've already warned you. Both Kelsey brothers? Oh, wow. Hold on. Hold on. Or Ben Affleck. <laughs> That's a really, really tough one. You're kind of, you're basically airtight with the Kelsey bros, right? Like, yeah. they're, <laughs> you're just a fucking, like, spigot, oh, right? They're just. Leaky submarine, just yeah. in the mouth, in the ass. Yeah. And, 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 and they, there's a, by the way, there's a lot of power behind these thrusts. Oh, wow. I'm going to, I'm going to be <laughs> taking a fucking rest day. It's my Monday. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need that cold plunge. I've always wanted to be, have a brother. So yeah. I think both the Kelsey brothers you'd be a part of the family and you get all the inside For jokes sure. yeah, yeah. and you'd and all of a sudden you'd be welcomed in to them yeah and you could hang out with I mean they, okay well they got to get rid of their wives yeah yeah Leave their Taylor families. and Kelsey are gone it's really tough to be enough for two, like two people you're always going to be dealing with like mm. Jason's gonna be like oh how was I guess you spent the night with Travis last night you know what I mean and then you're like dude I 
fucking love you. I might I just, be enough for a thruple. You think so? I might be the perfect guy for a thruple because I'm a lot. You are a lot. You're I a might lot. have total thruple energy. But but ben, then the question ben is Ben Affleck. Oh, man. brooding. Yeah. Cigarette, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Always, sat, he's got the same scrolling thing I have where he's like, God, man, I'm, I want to get down tonight. Yeah. And then I could get a loose. Are you sober? No, I'm not with me. Okay. Not with me. And he's just left J-Lo again. He's just left J-Lo. He's lost. He's confused. Yeah. He's got a house in the hills. Yeah. We bump into each other at Runyon Canyon. And he's like, hey, I saw the thing that you and uh, the other guy did with the brackets. Is that real? <laughs> and I go, huh? And he goes, would you, would you for real? And I go, yeah, I said it. And he go, hey, come hang out with me tonight. I'm off the wagon. I'm partying. But I got my shit under control. And I'm like, okay. He's like, hey, don't bring your chick. And Just like, me and you. You're like, yeah, of course. And then the other pitch is me and you are at an event and the Kelsey brothers walk up shoulder to shoulder with me and they're like, hey, we saw the thing you did with Tom. Is that real? Can we take turns on you? <laughs> oh, what's that saying? There's truth to every joke. And we know that Bert's a terrible actor after seeing the machine movie flop in more ways than one. But this wasn't just a five or 10 minute conversation. It was the whole theme of this episode. It went for over an hour. This is what they call content. Now, it's the finals. It's the finals, dude. Who are you going to choose? <laughs> I can't believe I, I can't believe that in my final running, I don't have great names like Winston Churchill, Ben Affleck. Yeah. I don't have great f***ing names. Josh Hartnett. Yeah. Leo. All, Shannon Sharp. They're all out of the finals. They're all I, they're, out. I'm so shocked huh. that they didn't make it to the finals. This is like. That my final choice is either Johnny Depp or Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Johnny Depp. Or Hugh Jackman. I want you as a listener right now, very quickly, who would you get into a relationship with? Sexual relationship. And it's young Johnny Depp. And it's young Johnny Depp. All right, just quickly, how much does Tom Segura look like Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder? <laughs> anyway, this is the level of content we've come to expect from two of Joe Rogan's never been funny comedians in 2024. And I just want to make a couple of comments before I move on to the scam that they were recently exposed for by Mike from Red Bar Radio. There's a bunch of people, including myself, who give Rogan a hard time for his lack of preparation for guests and just his general laziness when it comes to the production of his podcast. Just last week on Protect Our Parks, we saw him and Jamie fumbling their way through YouTube's copyright rules. They had no idea which clips they could play. Rogan kept turning to Jamie, asking him if he could pull something up. And Jamie just kept saying no and eventually blurted out, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. I've been listening to the latest episode of JRE with David Tell as well, and Jamie was just basically ignoring Rogan whenever he asked Jamie to pull up a video. I just can't get past this. I don't understand how Rogan has a $250 million contract with Spotify and they can't buy the rights to play the song Team America. Like, it's just wild. It's the biggest podcast on the planet. But the reason I'm telling you all of this is because Two Bears, One Cave is the complete opposite. Because, like, I go to Tom's. Have you been to Tom's? Tom. Tom's? Oh, yeah. It's like they have a real production staff. Yeah. There's all these people running around with clipboards, and it's like... I went to Bert's house the other day. He had eight people behind computers yeah. just typing away. What the f*** they're doing? Emailing oh, what? Social media yeah. going crazy, promoting arena shows. Everyone's going nuts. Me, no. I don't want that in my life. So there's obviously pros and cons to both of these, right? On the one hand, you've got the JRE style of podcast where Rogan rarely prepares and just lets the conversation with his guest go in its own direction over two to three hours. On the other hand, you've got the highly produced style of YMH Studios where everything is prepared into segments and they both have notes on what to talk about next and how long to talk about it for, followed by 50 ad reads. But the problem is... Tom and Bert aren't using that production power to create good, well-informed, and researched content. Hell, it's not even really that fun anymore. They're just using it to produce straight-up cringe bait, and that's the frustrating thing, right? They obviously know this, and they're doing it on purpose. Think about it. With all the producers and managers, PR staff and agents, etc., that Tom and Bert have employed, none of the things that happen on their podcasts are by mistake. Most of it's planned, and some of it's probably even scripted for them. So they know that to stay in the conversation, they have to lean into the cringe, 
That's how you get Bert's top five NBA players that he'd sleep with. And banking episodes doesn't help either. I think you need to have time away from the studio to come up with good content and stories. I mean, you got to have a life, right? Otherwise, you're boxing yourself in forcing content that comes off as unnatural and manufactured. So the bottom line is these guys are simply doing too much and it's all part of this ongoing grift. Now, speaking of grifting, have you heard about their new vodka? Well, you can't exactly buy it yet because it hasn't officially been released, but they have released the merch already and things aren't going so well. Mike from Red Bar Radio bought a Poor Osos t-shirt and made an interesting discovery. I'm looking at these pictures and I'm going, man, this really doesn't look like the t-shirt that I received. And then I very quickly realized it's because it's not the t-shirt I received. I'll break the news to you quick. In all of the poor Osos advertising and listings for the item on their store, they're using expensive, thick, AS color t-shirt. Here's Tom looking like a stud in the shirt, no wrinkles, and you see the nice, thick collar. You see that there's not, it looks nice and sturdy and thick, and you could scroll through these pictures. Every photo of Tom is in the nice version of this piece of shit shirt that we actually get here's the proof there's that as color tag right there <laughs> that they've blurred Why out but they i at least edit could recognize out? it and here's the nice thick collar you could compare it to this collar here which is extremely thin uh and junky and they're selling an item that they are not shipping and they said the merch remember when they promoted it next level merch this is this merch is next level. We're gonna have our vodka there for you to taste. We're gonna have great f-ing merch. I'm talking next level merch. Look over my left f-ing shoulder. It's great merch. It is great merch. Uh, it's an even. I'm, and I'm I'm saying this. I know I should be, but I'm gonna just tell you, it is an amazing product. I'm talking next level merch. Look over my left f-ing shoulder. So let's be honest here, this isn't a big deal. I mean, it's nowhere near as bad as Logan Paul's crypto zoo scam or Andrew Schultz charging his fans for his comedy special and then dropping it for free on YouTube a few weeks later. This is just a bit of the old merch scamming where you advertise a certain level of quality and you don't deliver. And that tells you everything you need to know about how Tom and Bert view their audience. It's one big game of how much money they can extract from their fans before we catch on and realize that they're getting rich off us and then bragging about the lifestyles we gave them while simultaneously mocking us for being poor. The joke's on us, right? Well, maybe not for long. I think it only pays to be a clown for a short period of time before people get sick of your act and realize you're no longer a comedian, you're just a circus act who's friends with Joe Rogan. But hey, we all know how much Joe loves animals, so I'm sure they'll always have a home to go to. Just remember, Bert, stop reading those comments, just like Joe told you. Me, on the other hand, well, I'm here for the comments. Take a look at what people are saying on the latest episode of Two Bears. Four minutes in, I think I'm going to save this episode for when I'm really bored or falling asleep. Who's told Bert he could say brothers like that? Two bears, 25 ads. Is this what Cat Williams was talking about? I really think I need to reevaluate the direction of my life. What have I done in my past that has led me to this place where I listen to this in its entirety? Coming to the conclusion that the only thing I liked about this podcast was Nadav's laugh. I'd rather go to the fourth floor of hell that's after the Chili's floor than keep getting advertisements. Yeah, these guys are falling off pretty hard. Like I said, acting the fool can only last so long. But that's it from me for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not a regular viewer of this channel, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and be sure to drop a comment below to let me know what you think about this video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. You're telling me I get to have sex and wake up every morning with Winston Churchill? Yeah. And now I got to suck his dick too. You do have to sometimes. So like, and so yeah, I've got to look over that belly and I'd yeah. be like, oh.